uh, present um, one of my latest research on the personalized federated learning model for intelligent edge network. Right, so this is the outline of our talk. Um, so before I talk about um, the recent um, achievement on personalized federated learning, uh, I would introduce to you about the concept of centralized machine learning. Actually, this is not new concept. Um, first of all, we need to define what is machine learning. So roughly speaking, we can understand um, in the most uh, simple way, machine learning is like the process of teaching the computer system uh, how to make an accurate prediction with the data. So with the data is an important factor. Uh, some of the example of predictions, like um, you can, how to predict the piece of fruit in a photo, whether that photo um, contained a banana or an apple. Another example of prediction like spotting people across the road in front of self-driving car, uh, or whether an email is a spam or not. Uh, the thing is, in the traditional machine learning, we call it traditional centralized machine, machine, machine learning, is that all three key components, including the data, the computation, and the communication are all on the same machine. So as you can see on the figure on the right-hand side, suppose like your laptop. Um, so the centralized machine learning model in this case, uh, we mean that your, the data must be uh, uploaded into the machine. Um, then the computation, the computation on the machine, it means this CBU or the GBU that will be used um, to run the machine learning model. And the communication here, so we mean it's just the IO flows uh, on the, um, this uh, uh, laptop. So everything's good so far. Um, it's very convenient to run machine learning model on a single machine like the laptop, but there's a big problem when you want to scale your model. So if you want to scale your model in order to have, to perform a complicated, much complicated machine learning task, then you need to have big data and you need to have a deep learning model. And in that case, a single machine is not enough. So it can run like forever in order to obtain a meaningful model. So therefore, um, we next consider a second scheme we call the distributed machine learning that's usually happen in data center or on the cloud. So as some of you have heard about data center, but never got a chance to see what is the real data center. So take a look at the feature on the right. So as you can see, as you can understand, a data center like a big building that contains a lot and a lot of servers, like thousands of servers. So as you can see in the cursor, um, this is a rack of the server, which can contain um, tens of the server and each of them, all of the server on the same rack, can be connected to the Y line. And then interact communication is also connected by Y line. So what does it mean? It means the communication to transfer the data between the server is proceeded on very fast link. Right? And what is the benefit of having multiple machines on a single data center to perform machine learning? Well, you can exploit parallel computing. So it means each of the server, they can calculate their own model on their own data parallelly. So it can give us a big boost for scalable model. All right. So if you take a look at the picture below, um, so you see that each of this part can represent for one machine and um, they have their own data here. Uh, suppose the, they want all of them collaborate to learn 
um, a model using gradient ascent. So here you see delta W here is the contribution of one of the machine. And all of them will, will contribute by sending their own model to a single, to the single reducer machine for the aggregation to update for the next um, model. So, but um, in this scheme of the distributed machine learning, one thing they have to do is to collect and process the data in advance. It means that the data should be collected and logged into the cloud. So what is the problem? So nowadays, there's a problem here is considering there's a million, a billion of IoT and mobile devices that are produced and they will generate a zillion bytes of the data. So according to the Cisco, um, by 2021, so the amount of the data that be generated at the network edge by those IoT and mobile device will surpass the amount of data that is exchanged um, globally through the data center. Therefore, we call this, there is a paradigm shift in terms of big data generation and storage from large scale data center to the edge network, which fuels the booming trend of what we call the intelligence at the edge or edge AI. So take a look at the picture on the right. Um, you can see here, this is um, one example of the edge server. Um, then in federated learning context, we can have several and a lot of client. So this is one of the example of the client, another example of client, and uh, we have three examples of the client. And uh, each of the client, they can have their own data. Is the data here and the data here for three clients. Uh, and the concept of federated learning is that the client can collaborate with each other to learn a machine learning model without sending the data to the cloud or data center. So that is one benefit that boosts the intelligence at the edge and enhance the privacy of the data is that federated learning scheme enable the collaboration between the client without sending the data to the centralized server. Okay, so uh, in this slide, so let me illustrate to you um, a simple um, operation of a federated learning algorithm. Um, so this uh, server in the central, um, you can consider as the aggregation server. Um, the purpose of federated learning is to learn a common model, which is called W. Um, so you can understand simply that this W is the model of the machine, the machine learning model that the computer learn, and we use it for prediction. For example, the computer can use that model W, which actually is just a vector. Again, ex example of input is an image, then the algorithm will use this weight vector to predict the object in the image is whether a banana or an apple. So the purpose of this operation is to learn a good model. What does it mean a good model? A good model means the good model can give a high accuracy prediction, all right? And then the algorithm to learn a good model is in an iterative manner. So what does it mean iterative manner? So there's an exchange, I mean many rounds of um, operations until there's a convergence. Here the convergence means um, every client in the network agree that a common model W um, is good enough according to some criteria, all right? So here, the first step, the server will send the initialized global model to old client. And then each of the client will um, compute or run their computation uh, to calculate their own model, I mean, their own local model and 
their own personalized model. The, um, especially that must be on their own data. Right? And then after learning the local model and also the personalized model, so each of the client will send their local and global uh, local and personalized model to the aggregate server so that the aggregated server will update for the global model and send back again. So you can see that the, the three steps will keep repeated until the convergence happen. So according to some criteria, right? So what is the benefit of federated learning? So we just come to know that, well, um, one of the benefits is you don't have to send the data to the server, right? Um, so what are the benefits? It's also cybersecurity is one of the top benefit of federated learning. Uh, because by eliminating the need of sending data to the cloud, federated learning can reduce the risk of personal or enterprise data that being intercepted, theft, or falsified. So let me give you an example. When processing security cameras with machine learning technique, we will employ federated learning to train the local models on the videos of each camera and sending only the local model to the cloud instead of sending the whole raw video file and just we can reduce the privacy risk. Another benefit of federated learning is in healthcare. For example, considering a rare disease. So with the rare disease, a, one hospital may only have a few samples of patients because it's a rare disease, so they don't have many patient data. And when you don't have enough data, so you cannot build an efficient machine learning model because machine learning needs data. But if we use federated learning, so we can enable the co collaborative training between multiple hospitals Think about like hundreds of hospitals can collaborate to build a single model. So each of the hospital may have like, let's say tens of the data or hundreds of the data of the patient of the rare disease, but by collaboration and you can have a lot of data. And still we have the benefit of, we don't have to send the sensitive data of the patient to any um, aggregated server, right? Because each of the hospitals can train their own model on their own data, local model. Another thing is the hospital also need to craft the personalized model that are stylized for their distinct data distribution and specification, right? Because the hospital can vary according to their location, according to such as like countries um, and the ethnic. So the hospital needs a personalized model that well crafted for the data distribution of the patient. So another benefit of federated learning in technologies is say for example, an autonomous vehicle use case where with the traditional cloud learning involve large data transfer and slower learning pace. But with federated learning, it will allow autonomous vehicle not only to protect its user data privacy, but also act quickly and accurately on any on-road incident, reducing the accident and boosting safety. Okay. So according to fob.com, um, they consider the next generation of AI will concentrate in three technologies. That is first is self-supervised learning. The second one is the federated learning. And the last one is the transform architecture. So, so far I just introduced to you a general uh, view about federated learning um, and its benefit. 
uh, from now on, I will talk more about our research, especially focusing on personalized federated learning. Um, in this case, we try to answer the research question, how can we leverage the global model, which is very standard model in federated learning. The thing is we think differently. We say, well, how can we leverage the global model to find a personalized model that is stylized for each class of data? Let's go back to the example of hospital. Each of the hospital needs the personalized model, right? Because their data distribution can be different. So, so what we come up with is the formulation as an optimization problem um, where we consider the global model, which is denoted by W here, is like a central point where all of the clients agree to meet and the personalized model for each client I, denoted by theta I here, is the one where the client wants to, aims to, according to their data distribution. So, the, the, so W is the center point here, and theta I minus W is the direction that the client I will try to aim to, to find a personalized model that adapts to their data distribution. Because the data distribution of different clients will be different. So that is the problem formulation of our personalized federated learning with Moro, Morio envelope. So one, we have several uh, key insights which give the benefit of this approach. First, with our approach, it can be agnostic to the inner optimizer. Um, it minimizes the objective function of each client directly and there is no high order of computation. For example, Hessian matrix is required. So let's um, review some of the literature re uh, related to the concept of personalization in federated learning. Uh, we have observed an, an increase of interest in personalized federated learning starting from last year. For example, um, there's some paper is it based on meta learning, some example based on the mixing of local and global model to build a personalized model. Some paper try to define a unified model for personalized uh, learning. Also, there are some other concepts of learning which somehow is very related to personalized uh, federated learning, like multi-task federated learning and meta learning. Then um, we will move on to the algorithm design for our problem formulation. So the key operation is the same. So we also have um, the step of uh, the server sampling the client, the client update, uh, the personalized model and local model in seven and eight. And then the server aggregated global model in step 10 and it keep repeated until the convergence, right? So we also try to um, test our algorithm on several data sets, including the synthetic data set, uh, the MNIST data set. Uh, we test this on two types of objective function. One is convex model, and the second one is non-convex objective function. Um, we try to create a federated setting with 100 of client for the synthetic data and 20 clients for the MNIST data. And we compare with other algorithm. And the experiment shows that um, the PFETME, which is proposed by our group, can perform very well and outperform other algorithm in the same context. And some of the research outcome of the our group for this project is that we have several publication in top tier conference in distributed computing and machine learning, and also some 
uh, in them top-notch journals in computer network and communication. Um, so we also have some ongoing work relating to um, several direction of federated learning research in our distributed computing optimization and learning group. We call it a dual group. So um, I finished my presentation here and I welcome all of the questions.